Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Music Writing, Ranking, and Reviewing Podcast, what you call Music Meltdown, in which we rate, rank, and review any artist discography, songs, musical topics, really that ever comes to mind. This episode, we're doing a pretty big pillar in the, in the style of college rock, indie rock, or alternative rock throughout the 80s and 90s, and contrary to popular belief, they did exist in the 2000s and the 2010s, talking about the legendary R.E.M. Obviously, led by Michael Stipe, we got the other guys that I'm blanking on the names of right now. Um, really, just a very captivating, very interesting band. Uh, they have an incredibly large cult following. Well, cult, but they got big. There, there are some people though, that basically worship at the altar of REM. Not there personally, but I do get it. I like REM a fair bit. However, I can fully admit there are plenty of missteps within the catalog and I'll let the cat out of the bag immediately. Michael Stipe often can annoy me a bit. I I've gotten more used to him over time, but just like he occasionally just irritates me just hearing him talk and sing. But uh, I don't know. It's not that big an issue. I don't know. I like R.E.M. Zach, uh, talk about R.E.M. Yeah, sure. Uh, cool. I think I... I I like R.E.M. Uh, probably a little bit more than you do. I uh, I think I would consider myself a pretty big fan. I totally get what you're saying about Michael Stipe. He is a bit tough to get used to. I think especially this band has um, a lot of their big hits. You might just hear them and you think like, what, what's the big deal? I don't really see what the big deal. But I think when you kind of explore their catalog, it helps contextualize everything. Um, I think they were doing really cool stuff at the beginning uh, and their kind of college rock phase uh, kind of helping to found the alternative genre in many ways, um, and even indie as well. And kind of moving along, they got a little bit bigger, and I still think they were doing some great stuff. Um, and they kept going, and uh, we'll see how that all shakes down. But um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly, it's hard to explain exactly what I love about them. Um, I think it'll be, it'll come out uh, as I talk about each of these albums, but um, I think uh, Stipe is, you know, it's pretty enjoyable to listen to him. It, it, he's always kind of interesting um, doing you know things you don't expect and then you know uh, Peter Bach is a great guitarist uh, Mike Mills has those great harmony vocals um, and Bill Berry was a big important part of them too until he left so um, <laughs> yeah so uh, looking forward to getting into it and glad you invited me on here absolutely it's kind of less of me inviting you on and more so you asked to be on <laughs> that's true i i didn't want you to just you know expose your views on rem to the internet without a challenge so that's what i'm here to do <laughs> no it's okay i'm gonna get perfectly shot on enough for this episode and uh oh well people will realize that i'm right eventually that being said though i'm gonna kick this off 15 records like with tom petty so gonna do the bottom two then back to three then individually so let's just get right into this number 15 I, I did this deep dive late last year. I had this record at the bottom, and I got some pushback for it. It is still my bottom. Uh, not the conventional pick. I'm going with Accelerate. Uh, I don't have any strong opinions on this record at all. It's a very low two and a half, borderline two for me. Um, it's very close to Monster Sonically, I feel. The guitars are a lot louder than they were. And I just simply don't think that it fits R.E.M. very well as a band. Unlike that album, though, I feel like this is equally trying to be a bit of a return to form in regards to their 80s work. And it just really doesn't work because there isn't any highlighted songs. They're all perfectly middling, perfectly okay, except for I'm Gonna DJ, which is really bad. It's <laughs> awful. But on, on the whole, this record is painfully mediocre, and it's just incredibly unremarkable in comparison to every other R.E.M. record for me. So that's not my number 15. Number 14, I have Around the Sun. I didn't want this one to be the bottom because I think it starts out pretty decently well. But on the whole, it just isn't very good. It's a very bland alternative rock with slight, ele ugh, slight electronic touches to it. It's an uninspired band at this point going through the motions. Stands for a couple of good cuts being Leaving New York, Electron Blue. I want it to be strong in Aftermath. It's just not very noteworthy. And I don't know why Q-Tip is on this record at all. It's never good. They did it on Pop Song something on at a time, and it's also really awful there. Just stop with the hip-hop. It's not good. You're bad at it. 
Uh, this one's also two and a half stars. It's just very far from their best work. So 15 Accelerate, 14 around the sun. Yeah, Blue is right um, on that one. Uh, so number 15 is around the sun. And yeah, I just, I've listened to this album a couple times. It is so, you know, after Bill Berry left, they really struggled with the, the drums and I, I, you know, they kind of get, maybe they have a drummer on this, but it's just a lot of it, just the, the arrangements. I don't even think the songs are like that terrible. It just, it sounds like they just kind of threw them together in the most sloppy and kind of exhausted way possible. So that even if, you know, there was potential here, you just don't really remember it. Um, it opens with leaving New York, which is just, it's fine. It's kind of bland and it's one of the better songs in the album. <laughs> so that's, that's already kind of, and then Electron Blue is kind of interesting. You get, yeah, I, I actually forgot Q-Tip even appeared on this until you just mentioned it. And yeah, it's, it's just weird. I, I really love Q-Tip. I think he's a great rapper. Um, just does not work in this style at all. It didn't, didn't make any sense. It just felt very tacked on at the end of that song. So many of these songs just kind of blend into each other. Um, Boy in the Well was kind of okay. Um, high Speed Train it was not good. It made me think of um, High Speed by Coldplay, which is a much better song. Um, just because of the title, I don't actually remember the music. Um, <laughs> yeah, just this whole era um, after New Adventures in Hi-Fi, after Bill Berry left, uh, I kind of call the snoozer era. It just, it, it feels like even though there's some melodic stuff, um, it just doesn't lack the energy that a lot of their material had. And I think that's a big um, issue with it for me, but I still think it's, it's decent. It's listenable. Um, so it, it's two and a half stars for me. Uh, number 14, I've got, uh, and it's close, but up is my number 14. And this is kind of the beginning of that era after new adventures and hi-fi where I, I think this album more than any is really impacted by um, Bill Berry leaving it just the drums there's just they try drum machines and it just everything sounds like it's kind of lacking drums it, it just it lacks that kind of um, beat that they had to so much of their music before this um, not that there's bad songs on this um, i think that there's uh, a number of you know songs of potential um, mostly the odd number songs i remember kind of listening through this uh, airport man uh, kind of opens it up and you know that sort of um electronic style which which has potential suspicion has a bit of like a john bryan type sound it's not him producing or anything but so it's kind of cool and my most beautiful has the the beach boys kind of um flavor to it and i, I like that uh side professor is okay uh, day sleeper is kind of an interesting song about somebody uh working at night um so I've, i you know, it was pretty well done pretty well put together just just a lot of these songs um that I didn't mention just again kind of float on by and, and they just don't really stick I, I don't really like Lotus that was one of the singles and just doesn't do much for me uh, and it's really long it's just it's way too long um, and it gets very sleepy and uh, yeah it's just not my favorite so there's potential here uh, three stars for up yeah I, I know that one's consistently near the bottom but i like that one a fair bit so it's gonna be a little bit before i talk about that not, not surprised not surprised it, it it makes sense for me to like it yeah anyways number 13 i had a collapse in the now it's another one i just feel incredibly neutral towards nothing bad on it it just feels generic to me like pretty much any other alt rock band could have made this album Without Stipe signature vocals and lyrical style, it just could blend in. I don't dislike listening to it. It's three stars. There just aren't really any highlights or really any lowlights to make it worse. <clears throat> Number 12, a record that I alluded to earlier, one that I know is also pretty contentious within REM fans, I have Monster. Um, I know that there are some people that really love this record. I don't. Uh, firstly, the guitars sound awful. They're really heavy, really distorted. It feels more like Dinosaur Jr. or Pavement, and it just doesn't work for R.E.M. It makes Stipe feel almost buried across the record. Uh, What's the Frequency, Kenneth, is an excellent song. Harsh with Eyeliner, I Don't Sleep, and I Dream are just all right. I did not like King of Comedy. I think Tongue is terrible. Um, and everything about Bang and Blame is just incredibly boring, generic, alt rock. And I don't know, it really just comes to the top because of what's the frequency can. It's another low three. It's fine. I just don't really want this out of REM. 
Number 11, this, this as well as one that's coming up is my most contentious pick. Sorry, guys. I'm going with Out of Time. Um, after R.E.M., uh, they got, to be blunt, I like the 80s stuff way more than anything else that they did. And uh, this is the record immediately out of the 80s. And uh, yeah, not not very good in my opinion. Um, this record is whenever they start to embrace a bit more pop. It's not to any extreme degree, but you can definitely tell they were aiming for that more than their typical crowd. Which I do believe inspired them to try out different styles, uh, sort of appeal to as wide an audience as you can. And it fails pretty consistently at that. Um, it starts out horribly with radio song, uh, Losing My Religion, excellent. And as you continue to listen to it, you just feel pounced around. It's almost like it's like a Tom Waits record or something. They're trying so many different things and just, it's weird. It's random. It's like, they're not consistent within themselves and it makes you confused. It makes you feel out of whack, out of time, if you will. Uh, Near Wild Heaven is good. I like Shiny Happy People. I know some people hate that song, notably R.E.M. If they're wrong, it's a great pop song. But none of the best songs on here come anywhere close to losing my religion. And a lot of them are just really lacking. It's not terrible. It's just a massive letdown coming after the apex of the 80s work. I did it three stars for Out of Time. So yeah. Sorry, 90s R.E.M. fans. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying about that album. I'll talk about it a little later, but um, yeah, I, I think it's uh, it definitely tosses you around. That's for sure. Okay, um, let's see. In my list coming up, yeah, I've got, I've got one in common, uh, at least with that recent batch. Uh, number 13, that's a uh, monster for me. And yeah, this one, it just kind of has the opposite problems of up in some ways. It's just all noisy rock and there's just not much variation in like the sonic quality of it. It's all very dry and um, yeah, I just, I don't really enjoy the sound of it um, just instinctively. And yeah, I, I think I get what you're saying about like Dinosaur Jr. or whatever. Um, and, and that, that works for those bands, but for, for REM it, with their style of songwriting, I just don't think this is the, the best way to do it. Um, my favorite track on it was actually uh, king of comedy. And, and it's funny cause I, I don't love the like vocal effect on it, but I think it's a cool song. Um, it's, I think it's catchy and, um, yeah, it, it's a little haunting too. Um, the opener, what's the frequency kind of, I gotta be in the right mood for it, but I, I do like it sometimes. Um, I agree with you on ton. I just, I don't like that song. Uh, Bane and Blame is not a, a bit, I'm not a big fan of that one either. Really, most of these songs, uh, like I Don't Sleep, I Dream, you know, it, it just, again, it just, it feels very, everything feels so similar um, in, in style and tone. And um, it's just really after Automatic for the People, for me, I just was really shocked by this one because I, I checked it out. So I was like, okay, I, I like that album. So I'll, I'll see what followed it. And I was like, oh, this is, this is really weird. <laughs> like, this is a real big switch in direction. Um, yeah, I just don't think it worked too well, but it's not terrible. I think there's, there's some, again, potential three stars, uh, 12, I'm going with the last of what I call the, the sleepy period. Um, it's reveal. And I think this is definitely the best of these three albums. Um, uh, mostly because I think it's actually of all the three, it's probably the, the sleepiest, but they really go for that, like style, the, the kind of hypnotic style on it. And I know that some people have this one a bit higher, but to, to me, it's still like a, too many of the songs are kind of floating into each other and um, lacking that energy, which is really what I value in REM and what I think um, draws me to the band a lot. Um, they're really just relying on the kind of melodic side here, and it's not quite enough for me. Um, that said, uh, I really, really love the track All the Way to Reno, You're Gonna Be a Star. I think it's a big uh, standout from this one. Um, Again, kind of hypnotic and haunting and, um, you know, talking about, I, I don't even know if it's really about the dark side of fame or anything like that, but it just, it's just, you know, it, it's a catchy song. Uh, Imitation of Life kind of returns to their earlier style. There's a couple other, um, like Beach Boy imitations here, especially Summer Returns to High. Uh, the Lifting, I thought was a cool opener. It's still, even though it's not that long, uh, it still feels too long. <laughs> um, again, just because it's, it's just lacking that, like, something specifically maybe Bill Berry. Uh, but I have this up uh, two, three and a half stars. I think it's pretty good. Um, I would go back to it. I like it. 
Um, so number 11 for me is going to be your bottom. Uh, that's accelerate. And I personally read this probably a bit differently than you do. Um, you don't seem to be a fan of these final two albums. Um, I get that. I'll say that, you know, they kind of work with somebody, I think worked with like U2 and some of their later stuff. And it kind of has that like generic, you know, alt rock band coming back sound. I get it, but I do really love how they, you know, it just the the album's called Accelerate, and just in that very first track, you're like, whoa! After those three sleepy uh, albums, like this is like the REM, you know, from Life Switch Page and kind of coming back. And I think it's just a real good burst of energy. I really like Looking Well as the Best Revenge. I think it's a great song. And it just goes straight into a man sized wreath, which just has a really silly chorus. Um, but I still think it, it, it continues the energy of the first song. And you're having fun, which is like something I didn't really have on those three prior albums. Supernatural Super Serious is pretty good too. There's some slower ones here, like Hollow Man and All the Day is Done. They're pretty good. Um, there are just, there are a couple of real big duds though. Um, particularly the last song I'm going to DJ is just kind of embarrassing and stupid. And I, yeah, it's, it's not good. Uh, sing, sing for the submarine didn't do much for me too. It's, it's at least a different style than the rest of the album, but it's it just, I, I listened to it a bunch of times. Not great title track, not great. So it's a mixed bag. Um, but it's at three and a half stars for me. I think it was a really, I, I, I like what this album's doing and I think they refined it and did even better. Uh, number 10 for me, the reveal one that you talked about. This is, this is a record that actually kind of grew on me whenever I went back to this. Uh, I just went three and a half stars. I that they have 10 good records. Uh, you can tell across here, heavily utilizing 60s influences, Beach Boys, Birds, definitely the standouts here. And there's just a pretty good crop of material across here. Um, I know that you mentioned the lifting being a bit too long, but I quite enjoyed it. Uh, same as Saturn Return, Imitation of Life, and I'll Take the Rain. Uh, there are some average cuts across here, but on the whole, it's still pretty enjoyable. And despite Bill Barry leaving, they're able to showcase themselves being able to work well as a band. However, after this, they sucked. It's a shame how that happens. Which, it, it's kind of interesting because uh, they they their albums were already treading and being kind of long after um, On Act for the People, but by the time of like New Adventures in Hi-Fi, they're already just at like an hour in length. And it's just, I don't get why they felt so inclined to put so much material on there, or if they didn't for the other records earlier in the CD era. I don't know. It's the true tragedy of the late period of REM. They're all just way too damn long. So, yeah. Yeah. Number 10 reveal. Yeah, for sure. I... It just yeah, there were a bunch of groups that did this and at the time, and they just were kind of fell victim to that problem. Um, as you know, I, I like longer albums a little bit more than you, but I just don't think a lot of these really deserve their length. Um, number ten for me is New Adventures in Hi-Fi, um, which is which is a long album, um, and but I, I really like it. This you know this is top ten REM, and I'm already at four stars, so you know it just shows you I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of this band. Um, I think this is a real big bounce back after Monster, um, mostly not because they're not doing stuff similar to Monster, but just because they're doing other stuff too, and it makes it a more kind of enjoyable listen. Um, How the West was won and where it got us, uh, kind of an interesting opener. Um, I didn't really like it at first, but um, I kind of like that piano part that kind of repeats through it, and it, it's, it's interesting. Uh, and then the Wake Up Bomb kind of goes back to that rock style, um, and then New Test Leper, um, kind of maybe returns a little bit to the sound of Automatic for the People, a little bit more of a um, ballady style, uh, which which is good. It's I think they're they're getting back to having different styles of songs. The the style the the songs themselves they have a very like '90s sound. This is like a very '90s album. It just has that sound, but it really it fits well within it. I think it it's a good '90s album. I wouldn't say it's it's anything that I would point to and say this is like one of the best examples of of work in the period. I would not say that. But I think there's a lot of good stuff on here. Um, Leave is kind of interesting with its um, you know, guitar part that kind of uh, shakes across the top of it. Uh, kind of a long song, but a lot of um, um, pent up um, frustration and stuff in it. Uh, Departure is pretty cool. Be Mine is a, it's a sweet song, I think, um, kind of a ballad. And um, you know, if, if you're into that kind of thing, I, I can definitely see maybe people not loving this song. but. For me, it's a, I like this kind of thing. So 
it's cool. Um, thank you to doormat um, again has a lot of those like 90 guitars and then uh, low desert cool and electrolyte is a great ender um, really pretty so you know even though I, I wouldn't say every song works perfectly but I don't know if there's any song that I hate on here uh, it's definitely kind of long um, it's like an instrumental in there I, I I don't know if it needs to be quite this long but um, I just I like it and I think it's pretty good I don't there's not huge highs there's not big lows it's it's really good yeah I like that one too it's gonna be a bit higher for me surprised it's that low but I, I don't know that's another one that I see fluctuating a lot across lists I've seen people play it as low as the bottom somehow I've seen people play it as high as number one so that that's really the main one that I see fluctuating a lot that and monster so yeah for it, sure mid 90s REM crazy Talk about late nineties REM though with up. Uh, this is an album I want to like a lot more than I actually do. I think the style is really cool. I think REM are adapting to that late nineties sound pretty well. I like a lot of their post eighties work. It is ungodly and consistent. Uh, I think there are some great songs on here: Lotus, Suspicion, Hope, Walking Afraid, and Day Slipper. There are just so many songs that I think are pretty bland. Stuff like The Apologists, You're in the Air, and Why Not Smile. And the main issue that puts it lower, it, it's just the length. It You don't need a full hour of R.E.M. basically being an indie rock band. It, it's just too much material. I, I like it. It's a three and a half stars. And to be honest, I was kind of tempted to put it above my next record. But um, I don't know. I, I like it. Three and a half stars. It's just it's too long. And, and I don't know. Somebody need to trim. Get, get Bill Barry there to like kick you guys and get him to cut down some tracks or something. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's what he did, Pat Strumman. He was our editor. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, I don't know the history enough of the band to confirm that, but mm, it's possible. Um, yeah, I, I have a feeling I know what your next record is based on what you just said, but uh, I'm already dreading it. Uh, <laughs> number nine uh, for me is Out of Time. Uh, this is a, you know, it's an interesting one. I think when I uh, first heard about the band, I just assumed that this would be their best album because it has their biggest hit, Losing My Religion. Um, this this is just, this album is got one of the worst track orders of just any album ever. It is really, really badly sequenced. Um, and yeah, I, it, I was really hard to enjoy this album in the way that it's currently sequenced. It opens with Radio Song, which I hate. I think it's a terrible song. <laughs> really annoying um losing my religion though is great uh and then gets into low which is just really weird choice for like a track three it seems like a track you would want to put later in the album because it's really like emotional like it's it's deep and, and slow and and kind of simmering with uh emotion then you get near wild heaven which is very catchy and great then you get end game which i just i <laughs> i don't know what they were doing um but you know i've personally reordered this album i'm i think people have argued about how to do it and there's a lot of ways you can try to do it but i found one that works for me and that's the way i choose to listen to it now and i, I like listening to it in that format uh shiny happy people is on here uh this is a cool song um you know it's kind of inspired by like um chinese propaganda and stuff like that um people just kind of hear it and think it's a children's song i think there's more to it but but the end result compared to some of the stuff they did on like green and some of the ironic songs there i think it's a little bit more straightforward and thus i don't know if i quite like it as much uh, i can see how the kind of context is lost on people in the way that they did it and i can see how it's a hit that maybe loses some people but i like it enough on this album um the lawn has some spoken word, which is kind of weird again in the track order, but I I, I think it's um, you know it's a pretty song. Uh, the the end of the original album listing has some of their best ones: uh, Texarkana, Country Feedback, and Mean Honey are all really really good. So th there they throw those at the end of my uh, track listing. I put them closer to the front because I, I think they help get the momentum rolling. Uh, so there's a lot of good stuff in here. There's definitely some big missteps too. Um, it's definitely not free of problems, but um, it's got a lot of great stuff. So four stars out of time. Yeah. I, I used to like that record more, but um, you know, the track listing, it's just really piss poor. It's like 
I, I almost wish it was like released as multiple EPs that just kind of like collected the tracks that were kind of similar together. It's just, it's so disjointed. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's time for me to get shit on. Well, my number eight's automatic for the people. I just don't get this record. <laughs> it's good. I like it. I have the three and a half stars, but I do not understand how it's anywhere near their best work. Uh, I don't love Drive. It's decent, but it's one of the worst tracks here for me. Um, uh, sorry, Zach. Uh, the Sidewinder Sleeps Tonight and Everybody Hurts are incredible, though. And near the end, Man on the Moon and Night Swimming are excellent. I want to highlight real quick. Uh, there's a cover of Night Swimming by Jason Isbell, which I actually like more than this version. It's really excellent. I think it's sort of a modern Americana style. I don't know. But you, you know how I feel whenever we're talking about World Outside. So glad, glad, glad <laughs> I was able to glad I'm able to bring this back. I, I just simply, oh yeah, the interlude on here is totally pointless. And I just, I just don't think that this is their best crop of material. It sounds very good. The highs are very high, but there's just plenty of decent to mediocre material across here. It's good, but I just like everything that I did in the 80s way more. I just find that sound for REM to be far more interesting. I don't know. I don't hate this record. I like it, but I just don't see it being like one of the highlights of the decade for me. So number eight on the night for people, three and a half stars. Get the pitchforks out. <laughs> yeah, well, you're you're very wrong about that. Um, I will say I know that uh, <laughs> the sound is different from the 80s, so I definitely get preferring the 80s. To, I'll talk a bit more about it when I get there, which will be, you know, long time from now but um yeah I th- you're crazy to say that not every song's a winner they're, they're all winners uh it's a great album uh and it's way better than world outside uh, i know i've made some comments on that album so. is it, is it way better <laughs> it's way better and okay the half, there's a half star difference which i think you agree to so. <laughs> yeah sounds sounds about right okay uh what are we on here uh Oh, number eight. Okay, I'm finally yeah, getting to the, the one that you're probably worried I'm going to hold on to for way too long. I Uh-oh. probably already have. Uh, it's collapsed into now. Oh, I uh, it's the very last one. Yes, I still do. Uh, yeah, I I listened to this album, um, I think a couple of years ago, maybe. And I was really surprised. I, I think it's a great album. Um, it's, you know, it's, again, taking that sound that they were starting on Accelerate, but I don't think that they perfectly got down yet. And they just put together a bunch of very memorable songs. I, you know, I used to, I think, even like this even more. I was like, wow, this is like a really great late period um, album. I, I, I can tell that it's not like REM in their prime. Um, something about it seems a little bit more forced, you know, the, the sounds and everything. So I think I get that. I'm, I'm tempering myself a little bit, but I still think it's a really solid album. Uh, discoverer has a you know a lot of curiosity and energy it's 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 a really you know kind of earnest track and i i think it's a great opener uh all the best uh kind of gets into the rock and then it kind of moves into a couple of tracks that are kind of unusual for them you berlin uh, has a cool uh, acoustic guitar part um oh my heart almost has more of um maybe an indie sound or something like that i think they're both pretty good I really like it happened today. I think it's about um, grief or something like that. But um, just you know, saying that hip hip hooray, like it, it happened. You know, uh, it's it's a really um, sweet song in that way. Uh, Mine smell like honey is a really weird um, phrase, but the song itself is really good. Walk it back, I like a lot. That feels like it kind of harkens back to the automatic sound um, and kind of that repetitive um, chorus, but. Um, the more gentle um, song. Alligator, Aviator, Autopilot, Antimatter, maybe my favorite on the whole album, I think. Um, and that one is, and uh, that someone is you, just so much energy, just blistering and exciting. Um, yeah, love it. Just just feels like a great song to just like run around a city and ride trains and <laughs> just enjoy life. Uh, me, Marlon Brando, kind of a weird one at the end. It's not bad though. Uh, Blue has like some spoken word and goes back into Discoverer. So it feels like a cohesive ending, maybe not like the greatest ending, but yeah, I, I just think that again, like I remember all these songs really well. Uh, I think it, it really works. They're really intending this to be like a final statement. I don't know if it's perfect for that, but I just think it's a great album. I enjoy listening to it. Uh, 
four stars. Yeah, Here, here's kind of my stance. You, you say it's like a state, and it's how they're wanting to end their how they're wanting to end their career on it. However, I think it's more like a sentence. It, it's it's not that impactful. It just sort of exists. It, it flips. Um, it exists so well. It's a happy it's, existence sure. for me. We'll go with that. As long as you're enthused, that's all that matters. My number seven. Whoa, I've already talked about every 90s and 2000s REM record. I wonder what this one could be. No Adventures in Hi-Fi. Still not anywhere near the 80s work, but I think New Adventures has some very strong material on it. Uh, the biggest issue here is length. So much filler. It's just... Uh, if this was trimmed down to like the best 10 songs or so, this would pretty much be like top three REM for me. I think that there are incredible songs across this record. But as it stands, uh, Bill Berry wasn't doing his job of editing very well on this record, it appears. <laughs> um, How the West Was One is great, and Wake Up Bomb is really strong as well. I think Undertow is pretty cool, and of course the closing song, Electro White, is amazing. And there's some other strong cuts on here. I have this one at a higher three and a half stars. Could have used some fine tuning, but as it stands, it's pretty damn good. And I finally get to talk about albums I care about because all that's left is the 80s work. Take this for granted because me loving the 80s more than a different period of a band will not happen often. So hold <laughs> this one tight. Well, it's good. It's great stuff. Um, I don't think I've talked about any of it. So, um, But you will now. Yes, that's that's right. Um but just quick, you know, you're saying Bill Berry. <laughs> you still have no idea what that 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 statement's true. But uh, Bill Berry did have like an accident on stage yeah. in '95 or something. So you know, maybe that took him out of his editing role, which he clearly. Has. <laughs> anyway, evidently, um, he, he, <laughs> didn't even he didn't even drum. That, that was just the show. He was just there with a clipboard and an eraser. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is how historians do their work. Clearly. Um. Anyway. Uh. Number seven. Uh, this is going to be uh, Fables of the Reconstruction, and um, I like some more and more every time I hear it. I think it's great. Um, still at four stars for now, but very high four stars. Um, really like it. it. It opens differently than the first two. Uh, feeling Gravity's pull is a lot darker and more like gothic sounding, as well as uh, Maps and Legends. And it's interesting. It, you know, I, I've really like the jangly college rock sound on the first two and i think when i've listened to this album in the past it kind of throws me off but i really learned to appreciate these songs for what they are i think they're really cool i think the guitar and feeling gravity's pull is awesome uh, and then it moves into one of their best you know jingle pop college rock songs ever driver eight um classic uh life and how to live it is also great kind of goes back into that like um slower gothic-y sound uh, southern gothic with old man kenzie uh, can't get there from here uh gets stuck in my head a lot and i i'm like what's that song and it's like oh it's this song uh it's really cool um green grow the rushes has is really pretty um birdsy you know so it's it's good stuff um end of this album i don't know how to pronounce cohotic or whatever it's it's not my favorite good advice is maybe wendell g is a, is a I think a serious song. It's it's growing on me. Uh, so you know, I it's it's a strong four stars. I I like a lot of the stuff. I think it fits really well in with their best material. It continues a really strong run that they had. Um, and has some great songs. Um, this is kind of where it ends up for now. But yeah, I have very very little bad to say going forward. So number seven, Fables of the Reconstruction. Well. It's not the right one to talk about first, but it's okay. I have a feeling despite us having the AD stuff at the top, minus the one exception, obviously, that you're going to put at number one and make me cry. Um, I feel like we're going to have pretty different rankings for this. Because my number six is Reckoning. Um, I think this one is really good, but I feel like it's very much in some parts Murmur 2. Uh, the first four songs on this album are great, though favorite one being pretty persuasion and i don't really like time after time all that much but i love the track second guessing i just can't i just can't do right by you 
And while the later songs are all quite good, I feel like it's just not as strong as the first half of Material and neither Murmur. Despite that, Don't Go Back to Rockville obviously is a great song, but I don't think it necessarily fits in as well with this record. It kind of feels a bit out of place to me. I don't know. Maybe this is just me. Overall, though, it's 80s REM. I really like it. Four stars, low four stars, but still four stars nonetheless. Really good record, record thing. Yeah. Um, sure. I'm glad you like uh, second guessing and pretty persuasion. At least I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> I can give up time after time for now for, for you. Uh, okay. Number six. And um, this one is really well thought of. Um, and I love it too. It's we're moving up to 4.5 stars. So I've got six of 4.5 or better for REM. Uh, it's document. And um, yeah, I, I know people think this is, you know, top three or whatever. And I think it's great. Um, I love the opener finest works on. It's just such a, again, crash of energy. They're getting much more of like a political uh, confrontational sound. And uh, I love um, Mike Mills's kind of um, screaming backing vocals on it and everything. Uh, really cool opener, one of their best. Welcome to the Occupation is um, a little bit more stripped down, kind of continuing with similar themes. Uh, Exhuming McCarthy is um, kind of maybe a predecessor to some of the songs on Green, um, kind of integrating that, um, like you don't know whether it's like kind of corporate propaganda or like union anti-strike song, like it's it just, kind of toes the line and it's it's really cool what they're doing um, you just hear these songs on the radio you just think they're just dumb songs and you kind of like really listen to them and uh there's a lot to get out of it uh, i so the it has two of the biggest rem songs on here we've got it's the end of the world as we know it and i feel fine and the one i love and both of these songs i like but they're just not anywhere near like a top 10 rem song for me um it's the end of the world as we know it is is it's very twee and cute um but it fits well into the album because it has a lot of energy and um yeah i i, I do like it uh the one i love sounds a lot like um a neil young song from russ never sleeps but they they kind of you know they clean it up and it, 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 they make it sound cool it's it's interesting the one i love but then a simple prop to occupy my time just an interesting contrast there uh still just uh, and then you got strange in the middle which is a wire cover um and i like their cover uh but um, yeah, I just, I think for my top five, I just have a more instinctive love for the whole album and, um, the end of the album too is good. Um, fireplace school, kind of birds, um, uh, a little slower than odd fellows local 151 is just, just a weird and interesting ending <laughs> firehouse being screamed and all that stuff. Uh, su super cool. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think every song is really strong. Uh, Disturbance of the Hearing House is great. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know why I can't quite put it at my top five, but I really like it. I think it's very, very strong. 4.5. Hey, man. Um, okay, sure. We'll go with that. Uh, number five for me going to be Life's Rich Pageant. Once again, another four-star REM record. It's, however, the fourth one with that jangly kind of alt rock sound. And for me, it's a pretty clear step down from Fables. It just doesn't have the highs of highs in comparison to other records, even Reckoning to a certain degree. And as a positive, though, I think Stipe sounds excellent across this record, and will only continue to get better afterwards. And the songwriting is very tight here. Begin the begin, or begin the begin, whatever it is, I don't remember. Uh, these days, the flowers of Guatemala, I believe, and Swan Song are all killer songs. I do think there's a pretty massive misstep, though. I feel like you probably know what it is. I hate the vocal effect on Underneath the Bunker. It doesn't feel like it belongs on the record at all. That's that, though. I mean, it's really good. I really just love that sort of indie, kind of indie alt-rock sound that they got going on in the mid 80s. Just think they're pretty much the best at doing that at this point in time. So, yeah. Number five, Life's Rich Pageant. Four stars. Really good. <laughs> Very you to, you know, hate on it so much for like a one-minute transitional song or whatever that is. Hey, it, it had a, it had, there's a great 38 minutes to that record, but those two minutes that are terrible really drop it down like five stars. It's actually a zero-star album for that alone. Oh, God, I, I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about anyway. Uh, 
Um, I'm not going to talk about that one yet. Yeah, we're going to have pretty different orderings. But I, again, these are really close for me, so it, it was hard for me to even like kind of put a few of these in order. But yeah, document didn't quite get in my top five for whatever reason. Uh, my number five is going to be Reckoning. And yeah, I think this is um awesome album. Uh, I love the early era. I think um, what they were doing with kind of you know, combining jingle pop and this more kind of like alternative sound uh, was just really, really influential and just incredibly nice to listen to. It just, you can put it on and it, it's complex, but it's still pleasing to the ear. And um, I just think that they're really masters of it on on the, their debut and this album and um i've heard some people say this one's even better than uh, murmur uh i don't agree but um i really the only song i don't love on here is camera which is unfortunately the longest song um the opening is is pretty great i you know some people think harbor coat's one of their best i think it's a good opener i think it's very much in line with what they're doing in this period i wouldn't say it's like a top favorite of mine uh, Seven Chinese Brothers, again, has that jingly guitar and, and just really interesting uh, song. Um, then South Central Rain, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so annoying, but it's so catchy. Uh, continues it perfectly. Pretty Persuasion is great. Catchy pop. Time After Time, I think, is a great uh, dial back. I, I really like this song. I think it's really pretty. Um, I think it's a great contrast to the more upper tempo material at the beginning. And then it goes right back into it with second guessing and letter never sent uh, second guessing especially is just um great uh, great guitar uh don't get back to rockville is an incredible song one of the best songs um like the country flair and really they're they're kind of echoing that a little bit that like all country sound on, on some of these um early ones which which of course you know the birds were doing too or whatever which is it's of course a big influence um, but I love how they're kind of bringing that back. And I, I think the idea of the song of, uh, not wanting somebody to leave a place is, is just very, you know, easy to relate to. And I do think it fits on the album. I think it, it, it fits really well. And, um, it's kind of forms a, a late centerpiece, uh, little America, not the strongest closer, but, um, still good. And yeah, they just have a lot of great albums. So it just gets really tough at the top, but yeah. Number five reckoning 4.5 stars. Yeah, that one's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. I, I love the whole I'm sorry thing. It's so good. <laughs> I I've embarrassed Amazing. myself enough doing yeah. shitty impressions on this channel, so I'm not going to do any other ones. But um, <laughs> You had me for that. It's fine. <laughs> Anyways, you love the early stuff. Let's go as early as we can. The Chronic Town EP. No, number four. <laughs> uh, Murmur is a really solid start for R.E.M., Gives you pretty much everything that you want from the band. Incredibly tight rhythm section, diversity in sound throughout the jangly nature of everything. Sides bright lyricism and vocal deliveries. My favorite individual instrument here, that is the keys. They just fill out the sound brilliantly. It is filled with real perfectly crafted songs here. Radio Free Europe is incredibly unique but fun. Catapult is equally strong. You sang the sitting still, shaking through, and we walk. My only complaint is that it does have a bit of a ceiling to it. It's the debut. You can tell that they were going to improve as they kept going on and as they continued to expand outwards in their sound. It's still a very good listen. I don't blame anybody else for loving it. It's a pretty strong four-star record for me. Which is kind of how I feel about REM in the 80s as a whole. So like four stars as a whole for me. Really good, really enjoyable. I can listen to them at any point, but they don't necessarily I don't love them like I know certain people do, you know? For example, you or like Nick or Eric or somebody who I know are like head over heels for this era. So they're really Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. I, I think um I'm definitely a big fan. I don't know if I'm the biggest all time fan other than one album, but uh <laughs> which I will get to. Uh but yeah, I'm glad you have that one at number four. I, I feel like I've seen that unconsciously low on some lists lately, and I'm glad that people are like you are being reasonable there. At least about that one uh okay what am i on oh yeah i know what i'm on uh, one you haven't talked about yet it's green uh number four 4.5 stars this one's risen a lot for me I, I used to have this at four when i first heard it um and it's a really intriguing album i think it, it just took a little bit of time to get used to songs like pop song 89 and stand and get up 
they're super on the nose, but it's kind of the point. It's they're supposed to be kind of ironic songs. Um, Stand in particular has risen a lot for me. I, it's it may be like my favorite hit of there now, uh, of theirs now, because it just again it just really straddles that line of it sounds like it could be like a corporate like HR like learn how to do stuff for your firm song, it, but it could also be like kind of secretly a song about like going out and striking against the company or something like that. It just you don't really know what it is, and it it just reeks of lots of propaganda and really unique uh, idea. Um, and the melody is great. Um, that's why people find it annoying. Uh, but I think that the substance underneath is actually really cool too. Um, so if you find that one annoying, I, I encourage you to give it another chance and, and try to kind of read into it a little bit more. Um, Pop Song 89 opening up is just dumb and fun and <laughs> overblown and, and great. I, again, used to kind of be annoyed by it, but now I just really look forward to, to hearing that. Um, so that's kind of one style of song on here. The second style is they start opening up their acoustic stuff. Overall, it's good. Um, you are the everything is good. Ron Child is the hair shirt is good. It, I wouldn't say that the acoustic stuff is the strongest, but what it's good at is contrasting the other stuff. Um, and then the final kind of style on here doesn't really start until the second half, but it's it's a really heavy, um, you know, grungy style. And I love this these songs. Uh, Orange Crush, I think, is one of their best songs. I just uh, I think it's amazing. Uh, Turn you inside out is just keeps that heavy train rolling, and it, it just it kind of hits you like a, a shock uh, at this point. But um, really intriguing left turn for the album. I remember California slow and simmering, and then Untitled is a really kind of interesting closer too. So. Yeah, really strong stuff. I would just say I kind of wish some of the more acoustic E tracks were a little stronger. Um, World Leader Pretend, it fits in well lyrically with the album, but I, I don't know if it's just my favorite. So, uh, but I, there's a lot of great stuff on here. Um, Orange Crush has just got that haunting uh, chorus. And um, yeah, one of their best efforts. Green 4.5 stars. Nice. <clears throat> With that, any chance to line up is dead and buried. How tragic. But I killed that at number eight, so it's fine. Number three, going to be a record that I, I have to think is their most underrated at this point because I consistently see it towards the end of the IRS albums. It'll be Fables of the Reconstructed. Very tight between this and Murmur, though. I think it generally just comes down to the songs on here. Uh, once again, very similar sound to Murmur and Reckoning, so I won't waste too much time discussing that. Feeling Gravity Pool is an absolutely fantastic opener. Life and How to Live It is just great. And Wendell G up to this point is actually my favorite REM song in general. To me, just an absolutely beautiful song. And that's how I describe this record. I feel like it's less bouncy, maybe a bit more down-tempo, perhaps even slightly Americana. But I think Stipe just sounds incredible across this album. And I think it's a really interesting development off their previous two records. And I don't really think that they ever properly go back to this. I feel like Life Switch Pageant is kind of going back more so to the early two with a bit of, a, I guess, for lack of a better term, maturity that was on this record. I don't know. It's a shame because I really like what they were doing on here. And I think that it kind of gets lost on the shuffle. Uh, so Poor Stars, though. Very good. Like it a ton. It was a little reconstructed number three. Yeah, nice. I don't, yeah, maybe it'll grow for me even more. I I think it's great. I don't quite know why. I, I think it's just the experience of listening to it or something like that. But just looking at the songs, it's super strong. Um, number three for me, uh, Life's Rich Pageant. And uh, yeah, this is, I used to have this at five stars because the first half I just adore. Um, I think the second half is not quite as strong, so I brought it down to 4.5. Um, but that first side, oh, it's it's so good. Begin to begin um, is just such a great way to open it, where he kind of does that like silence meets security. <laughs> it's um, really cool, uh, and then it just kicks off with uh, these days. Uh, one of the probably their single most energetic song. We are young despite the years. We are concerned. We are hope despite the times. Uh, it's just, you know, so youthful and rebellious and energetic, uh, you know, they, they already had that on, on their more jangly early stuff, but they just really put the, the muscle here. I think the producer worked with like Tom Petty or something like that. So I, I get the, that, or, um, John Mellencamp, I guess. Anyway, um, has a little bit of that influence. Um, 
Fall on Me is great, and it's about I don't know acid rain or something like that. So they're they're getting more into kind of protest material, which continues with Cuyahoga. Um, really cool, like harmonies and stuff on these. Um, and uh, the track Hyena, I just I adore this song. I don't know why. Um, it's really weird because I don't hear the song ever talked about or anything, but it reminds me a little bit of like Radio Free Europe, but with just more of like a romantic, um, beautiful, like over sheen. And yeah, I could just listen to this song all day. I think it's gorgeous, but still full of um, their classic sound. Uh, Underneath the Bunker doesn't bother me at all. I think it's a transitional track and it's fine for what it is. Uh, the Flowers of Guatemala is a very beautiful, slower track. Um, and, you know, the second half, I think, has some good stuff. I believe is good. Um, what if we give it away is catchy. Um, just a touch. It's okay. Uh, Swan Swan H. It's like both a really cool song and like slightly annoys me, but I overall I like it. Uh, and then Superman is a little bit of the same thing where it's it's just very you know on the nose, but it, it's definitely a, a great hook. So uh, yeah, really, really, really strong 4.5 for me here. I, I think it flows really well. I think it's their most energetic album. Um, and it just a little bit of a cup above even some of these other 80s albums for me. Nice. Interesting. So you have the debut and the Everybody Hurts record one. So let's hope that you pick the choice that won't make me sad. Anyways, uh, number two for me is going to be Green. This is the album that shot up the most for me with them doing this. I always been a lot lower on Green compared to other REM records, having it pretty consistently at the bottom of my 80s list. But having gone back to it, I really like this one a lot. And this is my first four and a half star REM record. So they have two great records, in my opinion. Feels like a very natural continuation to document, a bit less heavy, maybe a bit more intimate on this one. Stipe sounds on top form here playing over some incredibly well-written songs. They two, of course, being Stan and Orange Crush, but there's plenty of great stuff to be found beyond that. My favorites of which being You Are the Everything, World Leader for 10, Turn You Inside Out, and Hair Shirt. I don't know. I, I don't have a ton to say about it because the 80s era, it's very similar, but very consistently good. Great jangly guitar pop with some killer vocal work and an absolutely insane rhythm section. They just happen to uh, really peak in this point in time. And I think that they are really excellent in the 80s. So uh, will I say that again? I'll probably find a way to say it like five more times by the time I'm done. But uh, number two, green, four and a half stars. Here, here I am saying this is an album that put me through twists and turns and made me you know, doubt whether I liked it. And you're just like, yeah, it's well-performed, great stuff. <laughs> it's yeah, probably maybe. true. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have time to say it though. I, I feel like they're over-analyzed, but like, I don't know. And it's they're, possible. Yeah. They're a very good band. I feel like to the degree of seriousness, I see some people take them as a little over the top. It's like me with a national or something where I'm just trying to discern <laughs> every little line and lyric to figure out how genius I think Behringer is. And in yeah. reality, I'm just overrating him on every degree. So, yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, uh, you couldn't even hear the lyrics of the first few <laughs> albums. That was intentional. They're trying to, yeah. you know, muddle it. And uh, yeah, there's only so much you can do. And that's why I'm not going endlessly, at least like some albums about, you know, except for one about the, the lyrical content and everything. Um, but yeah, so my number two is Murmur. And, uh, but I've got it at five stars. I, I love this album. I think it's just flawless. Um, what a debut. I, I just can't floor it every time I listen to it. Um, yeah. And you know, the lyrics are totally inaudible and, or, or they're not inaudible, but they just, you, you can't understand what he's saying. Uh, so I don't really know what these songs are about, but, uh, Dane, if they aren't catchy as heck and, um, just also perfectly contrasting with each other um great great opener with radio free europe um and uh just a great example of what they can do in their sound um they actually have a single version uh they released before this album version that's even more like energetic and i almost prefer that one um but this one is more atmospheric so i, I like i like both versions 
um, but check out the single version. It's it's a, it's a definitely a cool find. Uh, Pilgrimage is just like I have no idea what it's about. Um, two headed cows or, or whatever uh, got some like those country lyrical influences, but just the way it builds into the chorus uh, with the game momentum and the drums and uh, then the the jangle guitar coming in, it's just perfect. I love it. Uh, laughing. Um, it's just it's really kind of dialed back and relaxed, but it's it's still just kind of continuing along and um, very pretty. Talk about the passion. Probably has some kind of like moral stance to it. I don't really know, but um, I like the way that it contrasts the other material. Um, great chorus, moral kiosk, um, a little bit more distorted and um, dark sounding. Same with a uh, nine nine later, which my preferred title for that song is conversation fear uh because they say that line a lot um but kind of um a little bit more insular um nice contrast uh catapult is a little bit more bright um and just a great chorus um yeah i mean i'm I'm saying a lot of similar things about a lot of these tracks but i really think that they're they're all great standing sitting still is great shaking through is great we walk is kind of like a, a fun like nursery rhyme type song but i think it it works well and then west of the fields is kind of like a darker closer i just i think every song works is like amazing and uh flows great um five stars yeah it just i i have one better and i know you you don't like me for that but um you know i and i'll, I'll get to it but i do think the songs do blend together a lot so with my next one, I think it's a little bit more distinctive what I'll have to say about each song. That's that's really the only thing distinguishing them. I don't like it one bit. Yes. No, Not my fine. problem. Not my problem. No, it's fine. It, it happens. I know I'm in the minority upon it. Tom Daniel Williams, VC William Williams agrees with you, so it's okay. Uh, number one, uh, document. This is where REM really elevates into something that I think is truly great. Uh, four and a half stars as well. Uh, I could be wrong, but I feel like this is where they start to utilize electric guitar a good bit more. As well, the bass and drums being a lot higher in the mix, I feel like in comparison to other records. This is just a much more rocking affair up to this point. Playing a lot more energized compared to something like Life Search Pageant. I mean, this is the best Stipe sounds across the entire catalog, giving powerhouse performances across the entire record. And most of all, it's just a really strong batch of songs. Uh, Finest Work Song is a great opener. I love the weirdness of Strange. End of the World as we know it is a classic for a reason. Fun fact, my uh, one of my culinary instructors calls that her favorite REM song. Basic. No, I don't care. Love her. <laughs> um, with that being said, though, songs in the back half are really good, too. The one I love, Fireplace. Odd Fellows, Local 151, they're all among my favorite REM songs. The only one that doesn't fully connect to me is Lightning Hopkins, which is still good. You know, I don't know. I don't really know what to say. I think it's a great album, really fun, really enjoyable indie rock. I don't know. I like it. We're gonna have yeah, stars. Sure. It's great. <laughs> Just uh make this one quick, please. I, I don't want I don't want to hear any more bullshit about this goddamn album. <laughs> no, you're fine. Say, say all that you need, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to take my time, sweet time here. <laughs> so, you know, first, okay, number one, automatic for the people. Um, five stars, probably top 30 album of all time for me. Uh, it's crazy. I, I get it. Like, you know, in the 80s, they had such this fresh sound. And here I have been, you know, saying that the 90s albums are weaker. And yet, like, what is this one doing here? I don't, I even think that the, the core sound of this album is that different. It's it's just it's not quite as a, like a fresh sounding um, album. I'll, I'll I'll give you that. Like you know, I get that there's people that are like they they were best in the '80s and they so I do get it. But when you look at the track list here and you see what all these every single song just delivers so much um, emotion, so much to the overall like landscape of the album. Uh, it's just so haunting and so emotionally devastating. And I just think every song is just incredible um drive is just the most um again haunting opener um <laughs> hey hey where are you nobody tells you what to do baby it, it 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 just starts out in this kind of like um 
<laughs> landscape where where you just the, somebody's in trouble and um, you you instantly kind of get the the mood of what the album's going to go for. It just can it continues that well with uh, try not to breathe, um, which is just really got a beautiful slow um, ballady sound. I, I think they're really going off of their you know big uh, hit losing my religion for a lot of the the tone of the album. Um, the sidewinder sleeps tonight is the one that's maybe not so down and out, uh, but uh, it's a really great song again with um, a little bit of like a uh, the, the the chorus is kind of fun and funny. I think it it works well as a contrast to some of the material here. Uh, Everybody Hurts is beautiful. Um, it's really hard to write a song about something like this, and I really think they they nail it and, and make something that's, you know, just as much of a statement as it needs to be. And it's been a huge comfort at many times in my life, and I think it's just tremendous. Um, after the instrumental, I think Sweetness Follows is just kind of like obsessive and dark and um, really underrated. Um, really really haunting with the the vocals um and the the kind of the organ in the background um it feels like something is you know going horribly wrong and it's it's just really really dark and, and cool um Monty got a real raw deal um kind of picks it up a little bit in the pace but not the tone kind of remains the same um it's a good one ignore land uh is an amazing song um political anthem um one of the best uh, Annie Reagan songs I think ever written. Um, yeah, just just incredible. Um, Star Me Kitten should be F Me Kitten. Um, kind of goes right back to that um, kind of um, th that dark mood. Uh, and then at the end, it just it, it takes all of this um, hurt and and these feelings and, and kind of like catalyzes them and you get these three really beautiful songs at the end that just they feel magical man on the moon was a big hit for them um but yeah it just it, it perfectly toes the line between um, like a gentle children's song almost and just a, a really great healing song um night swimming perfectly continues that it's just piano and vocal but it's just um, so beautiful with with realization and memory and all this stuff and find the river just um, perfectly continues that with this that um, you know some really magical sounding instrumentation and yeah I, I can tell you're getting bored but I I do think it's great I think it deserves all the praise that it's getting um, I, it hits me on a really deep level um, and yeah I just I listened to this album ton and I don't think that this is ever going to change as my number one it's just a really profoundly moving set of songs really well put together great flow um yeah tremendous yeah it's fine <laughs> I, I don't know i just i don't get it like i don't know just one of those albums that i i think it's good it's perfectly listenable it's got plenty of strong material on it i just just don't see how it's been elevated into the stature of being one of the greatest records of all time. I mean, it's hey, just... you're very, very clearly coming from a very different perspective from me. So, <laughs> you, well, you describe somebody's it got to say it. <laughs> okay, sure. We can. Somebody, I guess, can say that once or twice. I'll just, I'll, I'll keep wrapping my 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 boys in cardigans and you know, Pearson. <laughs> I don't know. Any closing thoughts on REM? I feel like we kind of kind of made our stances fairly clear on this group. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think other than one album we have that much disagreement. Honestly, I know that our order was a little bit off, but you know, for me, they're really close. The the eighty stuff and uh, yeah, it's just it's weird. Like I don't know if there's just like one thing about the band that I would say is like the reason why I love the band, but I just think they're super consistent and they've done a ton of great stuff, and happy to talk about them. Yeah, pretty cool. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. They're, they're just. I hope really, automatic clicks for you someday. We shall see. <laughs> well, I've listened to it like three, four times now. It's not. It's not happening. Not I, all music's for everybody. Yeah, I just like the better stuff, like uh, my girl Taylor, right? Here. <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, <sorry>. wrong. <laughs> the hell is this? The Price is Right. <laughs> Come on down. No, uh, yeah, I, I dig REM. They're cool. Yeah. 
Um, I don't really have much more to add on this. Uh, if we should have gotten somebody that's even more head over heels on RDM. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah. So what's your favorite Toto hit? Sorry, one more time. What's your favorite Toto hit? Oh, I don't I don't know that much Toto. I guess I too much goddamn Toto. It's a fucking nightmare. Yeah, you should All listen right. to Automatic for the People instead. I could, I could I'll shut up. I'll shut up. I could really <laughs> get myself in hot water right now. <laughs> But I will not. You're going to be like, Toto is better. Taylor Swift is, yeah, it's whatever. And I, I like two Toto records at the very least with my knife for the people. But, uh, I don't, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's so different styles. Yeah. Know. I don't even know why I brought up Toto. I was going to do that like midway through just because it seemed funny, but oh well. Alrighty. That, that was REM. Uh, bye.